By now, you know that protein is really important, especially as you get older. It's the main way that you can help support healthy levels of muscle tissue, which will keep you living independently as you age. We know that muscle is very important for helping with function as you get older, from just getting out of bed to going to the grocery store to moving your muscles. Muscles are glucose and insulin sponge. We need muscle tissue. Loss of muscle tissue is independently linked with all sorts of ailments and diseases. So I want to share with you some findings from this recently published narrative review that was part of a conference symposium all about optimizing nutrition throughout lifespan. And they highlight how the protein recommendations are really not custom tailored to people's age and activity levels. And I think this is really important because we should consider the context here with all the different macronutrients. Like for example, it's recommended that, you know, between 50 and 70% of your calories come from carbohydrates. But what if you're sedentary? Why would you be wanting to consume so much of your energy in the form of carbohydrates if you're not really physically active? Maybe you had an injury. Maybe you're a truck driver. Maybe you are a secretary and you have to sit at a desk all day. You don't need 1,500 calories of carbohydrates if you're just sitting at a desk. Likewise, or the contrapositive, if you're very physically active, let's say, and you're moving around a lot, you might need more protein than someone who is sedentary. And so that's what this paper really does a great job of talking about, is custom tailoring people's protein intakes to their activity level, not making sweeping recommendations, such as the RDA, the recommended daily allowance of protein, is just 0.8 grams per kilogram, per kilogram of body weight. So, it, so basically, Check this out. You can see this image here, the RDA protein. For all women between the ages of 19 and 70 years old, all you need is 46 grams of protein per day. I mean, that sounds so crazy and that's so low. So if you're only eating 46 grams of protein per day, then you gotta think about, well, what else are you going to be eating? Probably baked goods, pastries, a bunch of processed carbs, who knows what sorts of fat. And that's just insufficient, especially if you're an athlete or you're trying to preserve or maintain skeletal muscle throughout lifespan. Because as this paper really does a great job of dive, diving into, physically active people need more protein. And as you get older, you need even more protein to, to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. And Dr. Gabrielle Lyon and I have done many videos to talk about that. So the threshold to increase muscle protein synthesis depends upon more of the essential amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, uh, to increase the, the stimulation of muscle protein synthesis. And that's where, as they, this paper dies into, we need to focus on the specific amino acids, the essential amino acids that are found, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending upon what diet you, know, you adhere to, from animal proteins. So if you're just eating vegan-based proteins, you're not going to be getting these essential amino acids to stimulate the critically important muscle protein synthetic pathways that are essential for preserving muscle mass throughout lifespan. And so they talk about how we should custom tailor the protein intakes based upon our activity levels. Going back to the 1800s, late 1800s, I think it was 1890 or 1880, there was a, a German physician who was saying that he did some observational studies in the factories and so forth uh, right before the turn of the 19th century and, and, and observed that people working in factories were more productive if they had about a gram of protein per kilogram of body weight compared to if they had less. So it's been known now for you know almost 130 plus years that higher amounts of protein, especially in people who are physically active, helps them move better throughout the factories and work better. So Again, these recommendations from our institutions, you know, our dietetic institutions and Institute of Medicine that we should be having 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight are not individualized based upon your age and your exercise requirements. So I think that's important. We're going to continue to dive into this, but first, I just want to thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. I will link this article in the description below. Since we're talking about exercise, you know by now that creatine is really important to help get more mileage from your exercise sessions. That's why at Myoscience, we created one of the only high-dose creatine products paired with electrolytes to enhance the absorption of creatine into your muscles where creatine actually works to help you during exercise. We also know creatine helps with cellular hydration. So the two together are a perfect synergy. You can save by going to 
the website myoscience.com and save with the code podcast. There will link in the description below. There's over 840 reviews at myoscience.com. So getting back to the article and finishing up with individualizing protein intake and requirements based upon your age and activity level, I just want to read to you one sentence from this article that I think is just incredibly important as a takeaway. Data suggests that older adults may require almost twice the per meal protein dose to achieve comparable muscle protein synthesis rates response to their younger counterparts. So I think this is really important. So if we go according to the RDA, and if you're a woman, you're just having 46 grams of protein per day. And if you're a male between the ages of 19 and 70, it doesn't matter if you weigh 240 pounds or you weigh 100 pounds, every male between the ages of 19 and 70 should just have 56 grams of protein per se. This is insane. This is antithetical to precision medicine. The whole part of the, uh, basically the, the tenet of Obamacare that was sort of effectuated, I wanna say like 2010-ish range, was individualizing medical treatment based upon one's unique unmet needs. And that that's the tenet of functional medicine. Precision medicine is individualizing and custom tailoring nutrition and care and medical approaches based upon what you need. And so just telling every single male between the ages of 19 and 70 that you just need 50, 56 grams of protein per day and every woman between the ages of 19 and 70, you just need 46 grams of protein per day. I mean, that's insane that we're making these recommendations because it turns out, as, as I just read to you, as you get older, you need more bolus protein per meal to stimulate the health of your skeletal muscle. And if you have underlying chronic disease, such as diabetes, such as high blood pressure, uh, or if you're not very physically active, you may need even more protein to stimulate muscle protein synthesis that helps with preserving and maintaining healthy skeletal muscle. So I think the recommendations are now changing. And as this paper talks about, we should custom tailor protein needs based upon age, activity level, and underlying chronic condition. So people that are chronically inflamed and sedentary, they might need up, upwards of 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight uh, as they are improving their metabolic health and recovering from the chronic inflammatory milieu as part of their health condition. Also, athletes might need more protein than non-athletes. Uh, elderly people might need more protein than relatively younger people. So I think it's important that as this paper talks about the, throughout the history of protein, it's constantly changed. The opinions are going all over the place. And I think we're finally uh, coming to some consensus here that we should custom tailor protein intake based upon age and activity level, and that older people should have higher bolus amounts of protein to help to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Uh, this sort of nibbling versus gorging debate has been going on for a long time. The nibbling is, well, have small amounts of protein space throughout the day. And it turns out that gorging might be better you know, for people as they get older. Having one or two bolus meals with maybe 40 to 50 grams of protein per meal to hit uh, maximally synthesize muscle protein synthetic pathways and as a, as a way to preserve skeletal muscle health and maintenance. So I think that's the big take home from this message, but I think it's important to acknowledge, you know, that German scientist, uh, Von Voigt, I believe was his name in the 1800s, finding that individuals that are, were working in the factory uh, back then, if they had more than one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight, they were more efficient, more energetic in their daily work. And so I think we should especially if you're physically active, prioritize protein throughout lifespan. So that's it for today's show, my friends. Hopefully you got some value from this. I will link that article in the description below and we'll catch you on a future one down the road.